Hello everyone, welcome to Stuart Inland. Laura and I are taking a walk around Selfish Point and just discussing a few things about the inlet itself. For all you loopers and liveaboards, just pay very close attention to sandbars shift in the St. Lucie Inlet on a regular basis. And welcome to the 50-somethings channel and leave a comment and subscribe and smash that like button. Okay, this is Selfish Point down here at Stewart Inlet. Laura and I came down here to get some footage of the boats coming in and out. And of course, get footage of the inlet itself. We had to walk down the beach because there is no access down here to this inlet. You can't drive up to it either side of the inlet itself. So the only access you have is by walking the beach line either from a state park, which I couldn't drive drive down and or fly the drone. Or purchasing a house in Selfish Point. Or purchasing so a house for a few million dollars in Selfish Point. So we walked down the beach on the Hutchinson Island side, which I guess would be the north side. Yeah. And we got our drone footage because obviously we're not on the state park. And now we're just going to walk around and take a little bit of footage of the Selfish Point side. So this is again, like we said, this is the Stewart Inlet. And as you can see, it's a pretty good size inlet. It doesn't have a very wide opening there at the jetties itself. And it does have its own issues. You will hear people say that this is one of the more dangerous inlets down here on the East Coast. This is Laura and I's home inlet, so we don't think it's that bad. We come through here on, I'd say easily four and five foot waves, honey, in our Key West. Yeah. Now, having said that, we did not go out in bad weather. We got caught in bad weather. I personally think that the Jupiter Inlet's the worst inlet on the East Coast. It's pretty small, kind of tight. Very tight, has a shifting sandbar. This inlet here though, as you can see, it Very has small. this little jetty out and it's called Selfish Point. It is a gated community. Hence the reason why we had to walk down the beach to get here. But they have probably the best view, not only just the ocean, but the inlet itself. Across to the south side over there is a state park. Laura and I actually went there a couple months ago with a friend of ours that came down. For the and first time after living here for quite some time. Yeah, it was kind of funny. We probably passed by that floating dock a hundred times on our boat and never really... Wondering if it was public or a private residence. Yeah, I didn't understand if it was public or a private residence. It's actually a state park. We pulled in there. If you're ever down at Stewart and you decide to go to the state park on the Stewart Inlet, I would suggest that you pay very close attention to how much you've got your motor trimmed because we actually ran into the mud. They have been dredging out the Stewart Inlet for the last year, Laura. Yeah. Year or so, so it's getting much better. And as you can see, I'll get a panoramic here. This is the gated community I'm talking about. I got some aerial footage also. It is absolutely gorgeous. While the drone's flying over Selfish Point right now, I'm gonna take the opportunity for all you loopers and all you liveaboards and even some of you vacationing fishermen. Take a look at my channel. We are actually doing a series of inlets here on the East Coast. We're just gonna go down, take some aerial footage, find out some local information, and make some videos similar to this one so that when you come in, you'll have a little bit to go off of. Now you can access this beach here by walking like we did, or you can also, we just had a couple beach their boat, dropped off the kids and I do believe the grandparents and we're back out fishing. And Laura's looking at, or looking for some shells. We don't have the shells that they have on the west side. You go to the west no. side of the on the Gulf, they got beautiful shells, we're known for it. This area we're flying over right now is actually got a several little shoals and very shallow areas. You have to stay in between the markers. And also you pay attention, there is a four way, we call it the crossroads, because you have the Indian River Lagoon, the Intercoastal Waterway, the St. Lucie River, and the inlet all crossing this one area. And it really does get turned up quite a bit with all the boating traffic. So all of you loopers, liverboards, and fishermen need to be careful at the crossroads. Stuart, I remember growing up as a kid, Stuart was where you came for all your doctor's visits. It's known for all the different doctors and hospitals over here. Everything. 
everything from the retirees to the little ones that need specialists to become a steward. It was and still is to an extent a fishing community. Of course, we're known as the selfish capital of the world, but it's also still got commercial fisheries, right, Laura? Yeah. Out of Manatee Pocket. Okay. And uh, speaking of Manatee Pocket, we'll get some footage of that, but they've got some good restaurants for eating. They've got those little art, art stores, I guess you'd call them. Kind of a gallery. Art galleries, yeah. Weavers, painters, sculptures. How about that house right there, the whole front side of the glass? There's another one up there too. This whole area here wraps around to a bunch of sandbars that we've actually got some pretty good footage. We go there on occasion and beach the boat and swim and snorkel. Uh, it's on our 4th of July video. Yeah, check out our 4th of July video. We spent the day at the sandbars and that's on the opposite side of where we're at right now. And since I uh, brought up the some previous videos, if you like this video, like and subscribe, you know, leave us a comment, tell us how we're doing. Tell us things you'd like to see. Most of what we do is gonna be on the water. It's gonna be dealing with our boat, dealing with our future, trying to decide what we wanna do with our retirement. You know, this whole channel is about enjoying life, practicing for retirement. But at the same time, Lauren, I don't have a clue. How to... <laughs> on which direction we wanna go yet. I mean, it seems like every time we think we have a direction, a little board boat for the Great Loop, which is our ultimate and the only thing that we know for sure we're going to do. Or get a mid-sized boat and enjoy it right now because can't really camp out or spend any meaningful time on a center console fishing boat, which is what we have now. <laughs> yeah. Now it's just for play. But as I was saying, Florida's biggest problem is we have so many options. And I guess that's a good place to be, not to complain, right, Laura? No, but it can also <laughs> make it hard to settle on any given one. Yeah, it can. Here we've got the drone flying out over the inlet. I want to show you as you're coming in, the channel markers aren't that wide, even though the inlet itself is almost 1,700 feet wide. Between the channels, you're going to have anywhere from around 10 feet all the way up to 15 and a half to 16 feet. However, those channel markers are constantly moving. They're constantly being changed due to the weather conditions and the shifting sandbars. You also want to pay attention here in a moment as we turn back in that you can see that when two boats are passing, depending on the size, and also, of course all the smaller center consoles are going to be running very fast, that you have to be very careful and give way, especially to the larger boats. One of the things about this uh, inlet here is that it does cross the Indian River Lagoon, the St. Lucie River, and the Coastal Waterway. Now the channel is dug out there obviously very deep so that we can navigate up and down the Indian Coastal Waterway itself. This boat just came through, you notice that those two channel markers aren't that far apart. I'd say they're no more than 75 feet at best. But just be aware when you're coming in, especially your larger loopers and larger liver boards. And as always, the fishermen are in a hurry trying to get out to the fishing grounds and the liver boards are a slow go. But as long as you're careful and you pay attention to the maps, you'll be just fine. So, again, I hope you enjoy everything. I know we love this place. And if you're ever down here in Stewart, you need to look up the local things to do. It's not just for fishing, even though fishing's pretty awesome around here. Beautiful beaches, wonderful restaurants. Yes, there's plenty to do. We've got a lot of, a lot of museums around here, too. A lot, of, a lot of things to do on the water. So next, till next time.